Another crazy midweek round of games in the championship as the top two continue to do what the top two do and Blackburn Rovers have maybe entered the race. So let's start the round up on Tuesday night as we head to Turf Moor with Burnley drawing 0-0 against Derby. This was a surprising result, I've got to be honest. And no disrespect to Derby here, but this is a pretty shoddy result for Burnley. I mean, they've kept another clean sheet. They've still got the best defence in the league by an absolute mile. But they've got to be beating teams like Derby at home if they are to stay right alongside Sheffield United and Leeds in the race for the top two. And this is the sort of result they might look back on and, and see it as two really huge points dropped. And they, they had chances. Derby had chances too at times. But overall, it's another case of... You know, when, when they don't find a way to win, when they don't find that winning goal, that moment of quality that we've often seen Burnley and this Scott Parker side do in games where we know they're not the most creative team in the world. They always often find a way to win, but it just shows when they don't, the eyes can quickly turn to the manager and his style of play and how sometimes in games like this, it might just not be enough on the day to get them the three points that they really, really should have gotten. So this is... A big two points dropped for Burnley, and it's a very, very disappointing home result for them. Derby, as they always do on on the road, you know, they, they'll battle away. They don't create all that much, but they find a way of getting points from places where it's extremely difficult to do so. And they're still on a pretty rubbish run at the moment. I don't think Derby are particularly in, in any sort of great form whatsoever. They're winless in six now, but getting a point at Turf Moor... I think that's absolutely fantastic in the grand scheme of things. Luton 2, Stoke 1, late limbs for Luton as they win at home and get themselves another victory at the Kenny. It seems like their only real joy is coming from Kenilworth Road at the moment, which doesn't surprise me at all. But I've been here many times before with Luton Town. They never are ever able to back up a win with a prolonged run of form and their away form and their number of goals they concede on the road continues to hold them back. So as much as this is a great result and you'd like to think the nature of it with a late winner might galvanise them somewhat, I'm still yet to really, you know, put any faith in Luton or get anywhere near too excited by them until we see them put a run together, which they simply haven't done. So yeah, it's a standard good at home win for Luton, nothing more, nothing less at this point. Stoke, though, I'm starting to see a few murmurs within the Stoke fan base that they're not quite happy at the moment. And I've seen Palash come in for a bit of stick. And listen, he's come in at a tough time in the season. It, they're not his players. He's just inherited the squad that was struggling under the previous manager. He's not a miracle worker. I don't know what more he can do from the outside looking in. Stoke continue to just be the same side that they've been for years now. It's it's an awful cycle of mediocrity, and I really don't know how Stoke fans manage it. They've had a couple of defeats of late, three in a row, but, you know, two of them were Burnley and Sunderland, so there's no shame in losing to the pair of them. I guess this is one that stings a little bit more, and they are now winless in six. So Stoke are a team, I think, it's worth keeping an eye on that things don't get too serious there, but Stoke always find a way of pulling out enough results to get them in and around 16th anyway, so they've been edged out by another team who might not be too far from them in the league table this season. Plymouth 1, Swansea 2. We've talked, haven't we, at length in a number of roundup videos about how important Plymouth's home form is going to be because they're absolutely hopeless. They might as well not bother travelling to away games at this point, and this was a home game they could have done. We're getting something from, but to lose it is an absolute sickener. It didn't look like there was as much between the two sides. Plymouth are often a lot more competitive at home than they are on the road. But Swansea used their quality and put both of their shots on target away. There wasn't many shots on target in this game. Only four between the two teams and they got three goals from it. But Plymouth come out on the wrong side of it. And these are the fine margins that could prove costly in the championship. It's three defeats in a row. For Plymouth, And the big concern for me, looking at their fixtures, four of their next six league games are away from home. And if their away form's anything to go by, you'd say them four games could well be defeats. And Borough are one of the teams who are coming to home park. Can't recall who the other is. 
So a really, really tough spell coming up for Plymouth. And we'll look at the league table at the end, but it does. It is starting to, to become a reality now, I think. All the underlying numbers, all the things, all the metrics, all the data that we've been looking at, which, which put Plymouth right at the bottom of the championship. I think we're starting to see them metrics kind of come to reality at this point. Swansea, unbeaten in four. And given the league table, it's a game they probably should be winning. Pompey nil, Norwich nil. A very good point for Pompey, you'd have to say. I think a corner may have been turned at Portsmouth, and I'm absolutely delighted if that is to be the case. They're unbeaten in four now, uh, Pompey, and I think they've won two in that time, and they're starting to pick up points at Fratton Park. Even if it's not a win, it's, it's a point, it's a clean sheet. I think in their predicament, they'll be the happier of the two sides. So it's a great point. For Pompey, and it's it's points like these that make a huge difference down towards the bottom end of the table. There wasn't much in between both sides here. Norwich had more shots on target, but far less XG. The quality of chances they created weren't great at all. And and, and this result sums up Norwich City, really. You know, I, I've mentioned in, in numerous roundup videos before, the two things I think they rely way too heavily on, and the two things that I feel like hold me back when it comes to Norwich... Is their reliance or their over-reliance on their home form and individuals such as Borger Science. And when they're not on form or not firing or they're not at home, they don't pick up enough results for me. And I think it's quite telling that they've gone from scoring 10 at home to Luton and Plymouth, who are the two worst travellers, the two worst defences in the championship. You could say people getting maybe a little bit excited about them. They then go away to Pompey and QPR, who not too long ago were the two at the very bottom of the championship, and they failed to score against both of them, losing 3-0 to QPR, of course. So this really is the Jekyll and Hyde side to Norwich City, which I do think is going to hold them back from the playoffs this season. So a disappointing result from them. A really good point, though, for Pompey. Sheffield Wednesday nil, Blackburn won. Another 1-0 win for Blackburn Rovers. Five wins in a row. They're officially the form team in the championship. As I say, four wins are all by one goal to nil. It reminds me a little bit of the form Millwall went on not too long ago where they were sort of one nil in everybody. And listen, that, that form quickly tailed off. So I'm not going to get too carried away about this Blackburn team just yet. And I do feel like Blackburn have the tendency to be a streaky side. You know, when they're on it and they're in a purple patch, they're really on a purple patch. But when things start to just go off the rails a little bit, they can really go off the rails a little bit. So we'll see what happens with Blackburn Rovers, but they've certainly crept into the top six. And with a game in hand over the teams around them, they've put themselves in a fantastic position where when that game in hand, they're level on points with Sunderland, which is outstanding. It's incredible, really. And it, as I've said numerous times this season, it shows what one good run can do to a team so yeah I, I don't think it's even a question of if Blackburn are in the automatic promotion race because I think they're nowhere near that but a playoff place and a playoff finish would be absolutely incredible for them and they're certainly doing their utmost to get themselves in there at the moment so it's a great run we'll see how long it continues Sheffield Wednesday listen I don't know what more to say about them from week to week their results are up and down here and there they've had a decent run of form but they're just a mid-table team for me. Sunderland 1, Bristol City. More drop points for Sunderland. It took a 93rd minute equaliser for them to get a point from this one. And it's a bit like the game the other day, you know, where they were banging on the door to get the winner. They got there eventually. The difference here was they were banging down the door to just get the equaliser. And... That's just, I think, where Sunderland are at the moment. You know, I, I predicted at the start of the season they would have a drop-off. They would level out. They would fall behind the top sort of three sides. And I think that is happening. It's been happening for a while. You know, only one win in eight. No one can tell me that's automatic promotion trajectory. It just isn't. I think Sunderland have obviously had an immense start. And I think that unbelievable start is propping them up and keeping them in fourth right now. But I think they are going to just slide away from the top three. Still think they'll have more than enough to be in the playoffs, though. So I think they don't need to get too disappointed that maybe their hopes of an outside run at top two might be dwindling now. But they're still going to be a top six side for me, which, let's not forget, pre-season, I think some of them fans would have absolutely took that. But it's only one win in eight for them, which is a little bit of a concern. And for all the chances they're creating in games, they're not scoring 
at the ruthless level, the prolific level they were earlier in the season. And that's what their data suggested. You know, their data always suggested that they were overperforming. Their goals scored a little bit compared to their XG. We're seeing that, I think, as well, as data always does. I'm a, bit, I'm a big data guy, and it always levels out in the end, trust me. But still, rescuing a point from the death is better than losing. And as I've always said about the Sunderland team many times this season, when they can't win a game, they often find a way to not lose it either. And these points all tally up as the season goes on and could be important come May. Bristol City, I think they've got to take this as an absolutely outstanding point. It'll be a sickener that they've not won the game, but they've had a tough run of form, haven't been in the best form. They've had some tough fixtures and the stadium lights an absolute fortress. So to come away from there, nearly with all three points, I think it's a brilliant result for them. And I think in hindsight, they'll look back at this as a really, really good point. Leeds 3, Borough 1, as always, I've done a full in-depth review of this on my channel in my Project Borough Reviewing Show, and I've got to say, by the way, the preview and review of the Leeds game has gone wild on the channel over the last few days. I've had some incredible comments from some Leeds fans who've really enjoyed it and complimented me for my level-headed, sort of, you know, level-headed approach to it and my sort of fair assessment of both sides. I really, really appreciate all the amazing comments, and to summarise, you know, as I said in the in the review, Leeds were just better here. You know, it was just it was a clear sign to me where Leeds are at and where Borough are at. You know, Leeds are undoubtedly a top two team. They've always been the best team in the league for me. They've always been the team who I think will win the title. And you could see, and I think Borough haven't been outplayed by teams this season very often. There's not been many times where I've been able to say safely that Borough were the second better side, but we were here. You know, and Leeds weren't even at the best, and and they still found a way in big moments to find the quality that was needed to get themselves over the line. But we were really poor at times, especially in the first half. There was a spell where I felt like the result was there for us to potentially take, but we just never looked like creating enough against this lead side. And when push come to shove in the second half, they were proactive. They made the changes. They used their subs, brought on quality, capitalised on forcing Borough into mistakes, which they were doing all night. And they took all three points. So, yeah, more evidence for me seeing it right there in front of me that Leeds are going to be right up there at the end of the season. And more evidence that Borough aren't a bad side. We're a playoff side, but we're not quite at the level for top two. And on to Wednesday, Cardiff nil, Preston 2. A really poor result for Cardiff City. Not the result I think Omar Rizzo wanted after finally being given the job permanently, I believe, which I might have missed at the weekend... In fact, their game may have been postponed. I can't recall if it was. But they finally gave him the job permanently. And it's not gotten off to a good start. Preston picking up their first away win of the season. And their first win in 10 games here. And the, the second goal especially was just a bit of a hilarious comedy of errors at the back from Cardiff. The own goal wasn't great either. It's just one of them results that's a real sickener if you're a Cardiff City fan. And, you know, the bubble has well and truly burst compared to the, the new manager bounce that Omar Rizza had when he first come in. They've committed to him now, so he's got to ensure that he can rekindle that form from when he first took over in temporary charge, and he can get Cardiff moving in the right direction again, because they are starting to slip into a little bit of trouble. Winless in six, only two points from the last six. They need to be careful they don't get sucked into something serious with teams below them and in and around them picking up the form getting points and overtaking them. So a really, really poor, worrying defeat for Cardiff. A priceless one for Preston, though, who claw themselves away from danger. Hull won, Watford won. Ruben Sellers' first game as Hull manager ends in a draw, a controversial draw at that because it looked like Hull City's opening goal was a handball. And I feel like the rule when it comes to offensive players is that if it hits the hand, it doesn't matter how, where, if it was deliberate, accidental, if it directly leads to a goal, it should be disallowed. So Watford can feel hard done by that they went behind in this game. But justice was kind of served, I guess, with them getting an equaliser late on. So the point is shared. For Watford, it's an OK point. I think given Hull's form, it is a, a game they'd have probably targeted to get all three points. So they might feel a little disappointed in this very tight playoff race that they weren't able to get all three points here. But Hull City, despite it being slightly controversial, have stopped the rot. They have prevented that six-game defeat, that six-game losing run from getting any longer. But they're still winless in 12. They're still rooted at the bottom of the championship. 
and they're still going to desperately need Ruben Seles and his tenure at Hull to catch fire quickly. Millwall nil, Sheffield United won. Are we surprised to see this Sheffield United side find a way to win? They had one shot on target in this game and they had one goal. And it's as simple as that. And I've said similar things about Burnley, but I feel like Sheffield United can kind of do both sides to the game. But I guess in a game like this where they're away from home, at a tough place, where they're maybe not at their absolute best, they still find a way to win. I say it, I sound like a broken record. That's what the top teams do. That's what Sheffield United do. And when their defence is as strong as it is, they only need one goal to win a game. And that's all they did. It was a solid, quiet, as it always is with Sheffield United. It's not swashbuckling, there's not goals flying in, they go there, they get the job done, simple as that, three points, 13 clean sheets now, I just don't see a team as efficient as them over the season, I think Leeds will overpower them in terms of getting into the top position in first, but there's absolutely no doubt there's no one else other than Leeds and Sheffield United who look like they're going to get top two at this point, they just keep finding a way of getting the job done, they did it once again. Millwall, winless in five. Feels like a long time ago since they had that really good run of form and got themselves into the playoffs. And they're going to have to find that form again. But I think the one thing they don't need right now is a change of manager. And with Neil Harris leaving after the Borough game at the weekend, they have to kind of get the next appointment right if they're going to maintain any hopes of finding their way into the playoffs. So an interesting time for Millwall, a, a period of transition I don't think anyone saw coming, but I guess they can't really judge their season too much off of a, a defeat to Sheffield United because they won't be the first and they won't be the last to lose to the Blades. QPR 2, Oxford nil. A corner has been turned at Loftus Road. QPR and Marty Sifuentes especially deserve immense credit for this run of form they've found from somewhere and credit to them you know another win at home they hadn't won at home prior to the last game which they won 3-0 to Norwich and they've got back-to-back -back wins at home which is going to be so important to them keeping themselves away from any immediate danger it means they're now unbeaten in five three wins in that time they're picking up clean sheets regularly as well it's the perfect Cocktail, I guess, for a team to pick up points consistently and keep away from danger. So, great signs from QPR. A fantastic job that Marty Sifuentes has done and I'm really happy for him because he did such a good job last season and it would have been a shame to see him lose his job so quickly this season when he's proven already at QPR he can be a good manager there and he's weathered that tough run and he's come out the other side really, really well. But I've got to be honest, I'm worrying for Oxford now. You know, that very good initial start that they had where they were doing really well, they were being really competitive, their home form especially was holding them up. They've never really been all that great away, but one win in 14 now, and although they're not dropping like a stone, they're sliding towards the bottom three, and when other teams are starting to find something, Oxford are kind of just drifting towards the bottom three, and I am starting to get a little bit concerned, and I don't know where they're going to find a an injection of form to keep them away from danger, like what QPR have just found. So I'm not getting super panicky about Oxford, but they are certainly going to start looking over their shoulders very anxiously if this continues. Finally, West Brom 2, Coventry nil. West Brom with another win. I say another win, it's the first in five, but they've been drawing so much recently, it must feel great for them to get a victory, a win, a clean sheet. It's, you know, brilliant for them. They've, as we all know, for a a good month or two, they've not been losing games, and I've said, you know, it depends which way the pendulum sort of swings, are they going to turn these draws into wins, or are they going to start losing games, I think there's, you know, there's been a bit of panic around Corbran, and a few West Brom fans have been a bit discontent with all the draws, which I get it can be a bit frustrating, but, you know, all they needed to do was turn a lot of them draws into wins, and they'd be comfortably in the playoffs, things are nowhere near as bad as I think some maybe thought, they were at West Brom and it's a very good home win for them. Let's see if they can build on that and pick up a few more and get themselves right back into that playoff six comfortably or that playoff four comfortably. Coventry, still too early to judge, obviously, for Lampard. He got a first win at the weekend and a defeat here. Can't really judge him too much at this point. But it is only one win in seven for Cov and I think they are going to have to start hitting form quickly if they want to try and catch up and give themselves any sort of chance of playoffs, which I'm sure 
is still the goal. So then wrapping up the league table at the end of round 20 and there's a little bit of a gap forming at the top now with Sheffield United and Leeds clear, you know, by three points to Burnley. They're the only two now who are operating at more than two points a game, which as we all know is automatic promotion form. I'd be astounded if the top two doesn't remain as is now for the foreseeable and maybe for the rest of the season. I still think Burnley are comfortably the third best team but when they have results in them like they did against Derby, just holds me back on them being quite top two contenders. I still think Sunderland will be okay, albeit they will start slipping away. I know they're right there with Burnley still, but I do feel like they will drift away slowly. And you can't discount Blackburn, who are right behind them and have a game in hand, which is absolutely astounding. We'll see if they can maintain that form over the next few games. And West Brom leap Pro Borough into the top six with their win. Still incredibly tight with the chasing pack with Borough and Watford right there alongside. And then there's another bit of a gap there to Swansea City in ninth with that mid-table pack of teams we've spoke about quite often who are just sort of in the middle of nowhere. Going down towards the bottom end, there's a few teams who I think are starting to pull away and maybe look a little bit more safe. I think Preston and Luton maybe can start to ease off the worries a little bit and maybe start looking forward instead of looking backwards could say the same for QPR, just down to the momentum that they've got. Derby and Stoke, though, are starting to slip and need to be a little bit careful. Same with Oxford United, but so much faith uh, and so much credit has to be given to QPR and Pompey, who were the bottom two not too long ago. They've brought themselves out of it. Pompey as well, who looked hopeless not too long ago, are outside the bottom three now. And they have a game in hand on the teams around them. Two games in hand on QPR. And Stoke, it's incredible turnaround there. And that means there's alarm bells for some of the teams down there. Hull, of course, have played a game more than everyone else. They have got a new manager, though, so there's a bit of hope there. For me, I think if you're a Cardiff fan or especially a Plymouth fan, you've got to be a little bit concerned that you are going to sink to the bottom of the league. And at the minute, there's no sign of them getting themselves out of it. So, yeah, a couple of teams down there who are certainly moving in the right direction, a couple who are slipping massively the wrong direction but let me know your thoughts on this round of championship games your thoughts on your team as always and if you've enjoyed the video do hit the like button subscribe for more hit the bell too so you never miss when a video drops i do round up every round of championship fixtures here on the channel so subscribe for all that good stuff and leave me a comment as i say and i'll be back at some point over the weekend to round up the weekend's round of championship fixtures but until then do take care guys and i'll see you all in the next one